Hey guys, what's going on? It's YoMG. Uh, we're going to talk about Logic Pro X and the new drummer. Being a drummer, hopefully I can help you out with some things uh, from a drummer's perspective to give you some tips on some being a non-drummer. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is pull up a Logic project. Uh, we're going to pull up uh, our favorite template, uh, this template that I use. And now we're going to create a new drummer track. Um, as soon as you go to the new track dialog, you'll see the drummer has already been uh, created over here. It gives you its own thing. We've already got the track created. We're gonna show you that just so we can create another one here. <clears throat> as soon as we pull up the drummer track, it gives us some content. It fills in already what it think we may need. Um, we're gonna start this on bar one. We got this little intro bar here. We don't necessarily need that. One thing I have noticed is uh, the very beginning when you start the drummer thing, it sometimes chokes a little bit. It doesn't. It's not really coming in quite on time. Um, the workaround for that, I found that if you have either extra space at the beginning um, prior to uh, the song starting, or if you can move the sequence back a little bit. So instead of starting right at one, if we start here, sometimes it helps. In this case it didn't, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. So as soon as we hear something, we hear that the drums are playing. Um, we get a choice of these imaginary drummers, which they are what they are. Uh, a few different names, Kyle, Anders, Mark, Jesse, and Logan, I guess. So whatever drummer we pick, it's going to give us a, a preview of the kit here. And uh, as you kick, click any of the instruments, you can change. So you can change the kick drum. You can also change some of the snares. You can tune the snare, dampen it. Pretty cool. A lot of cool stuff that you can do with the basics of the kit. Now, if you click this little box at the bottom, you can actually get a few more options. Shaker gain tambourine, claps, cowbell, and sticks. These are, if these are involved with the group, you can actually change the overall gain of them, how they fall in the track. So as we play this, we skip some kind of beat. This matrix window editor thing you have down here, kind of like a joystick, this ball can be moved around. Um, as you probably have figured out, up and down goes between loud and soft, right and left goes between complex and simple. And you can do this as you're playing and you should actually see the waveform uh, change accordingly. So if I bring it all the way over here, now even though these settings are global for this region, I shouldn't say global, these settings are specifically for this region. If this is my verse and I want to chop it up or I want to do some different things, one thing you can do is you just go to your region and you cut it so you make separate regions. So now you can make the second part of the region be a little bit more busy. Maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not. The other option is if you think it's too much, you can obviously, uh, you can drag the regions around. Um, you can make a copy, so we're just going to copy the second half. And then, of course, anything we want to change is going to be always relative to that region. So if I want the first part to be soft and cross stick or soft beat, and then I want this section to be different, I would just move the ball. And as I click the different regions, it's going to change that. The other thing that's really cool that you can do is you can actually have contact, I'm sorry, you can have the drummer lock to, let's say, contact or any other software that you have playing a bass line, a synth, or, or whatnot. <clears throat> so as you choose these uh, presets here, you got a couple different variations. And these presets change, again, per groove. So... Um, it only is going to change what I have selected. So if I change this part, the 
region that was not selected is of course remains the same. Now uh, the thing that I've noticed also it's kind of cool is you can lock this to another instrument. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to pull up some kind of instrument. We'll just pull up uh, bass. Now whatever you play with your bass line you can you can specify what kind of instrument you want and what kind of sound you want so uh, I don't know that it really matters in this case uh, we'll do just a clean fender I guess alright so there we go alright so whatever our bass line is we can add we can add the bass line in so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mute the drums for right now, or we're going to make up some kind of bass line. I don't know what it's going to be. Oh, it's probably the most terrible bass line I've ever played, um, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to quantize it now. Okay, so let's say this is the part we wanted. We're going to loop this bass line here. So now when we come over to our drums, um, what we can do is uh, even within the drummer that we have, um, we're going to click on details, and it gives us a few more options. Uh, first of all, within that beat, uh, we can accentuate percussion and different things that are up here. Uh, tambourine shaker and claps, basically. We can also click on these items and turn them on or off for particular sections, which is pretty cool. The thing I'm wanting to show you right now is the follow. Uh, the kick and snare can follow a particular instrument. So we're going to take the kick and snare and we're going to choose instrument three, which is that lame bass line we just created. Okay, so what we do is we, we create these drums and we can link the kick and snare to instrument three. So now as I do this, it's gonna look and see the pattern and the rhythm on instrument three and the drummer is going to change accordingly. So as we change this bass line, uh, we can make different variations. So we can copy this bass line over here. Um, if we change the rhythm or we change the bass line in any way on this section, the drums are going to follow. Even if we put a new groove in, as long as they're following this particular groove is following this particular instrument, it will work. So now we come over here. So as you do this, you can change these around. What you can do is if, if you want to create a new section, it's really easy. Uh, there's no record enabled in the drum track. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click on the track and you do create drummer region. It's going to default to an eight bar region of wherever you're working on. And so you can choose uh, any of these parameters. In fact, you can actually change drummers between sections, which is something you wouldn't be able to do with a real drummer. Um, it's going to change feels. <laughs> Now we're going to take this rock beat and we're going to follow instrument 3 again. Now we're going to do it in real time. We're going to create instrument 3 while the drums is playing. Uh, we have this thing, I guess it's kind of an A. Listen to what this does with the drummer. Now, of course, anything you click on, you can change immediately. Just remember, if, if you're really liking the sound that you have and you want to make sure you don't change it, make sure you don't grab this knob. Or the, the quick solution would be to render or bounce each of the regions in place. And uh, you can do that by right clicking on the region and then you do bounce. You want to do bounce in place or you can apply your key command to doing that. By bouncing the region in place you're going to capture as an actual audio file 
just that region. Now you can do any manipulations you would with a regular auto audio file, and you don't have to worry about changing your groove here. If you decide you want to go back to the original, you can just mute your render, unmute your original, and you still have it here. And so then you can audition different drummers playing the same thing. So if we say, okay, we want to hear a different guy, come over here to this person, hear this person playing the same parameter. Now if we say, we want a big fill here, but we don't want any fill anywhere else. Again, we're going to divide this region. Let's divide it right here. And we're going to take this one super loud, super complex with all the stuff in it. Of course, if we want to start that fill later, we want to move this around, we can of course move that region as well. Of course, I can change any of that region just by moving that particular sound. So by combining different regions and cutting them up in different areas, you can make some really cool beats and you can really develop a song in a lot of different ways. So let's say you come back in, you, you want to bring this back to another verse, another chorus section. It's real easy. Create a new region, right click, create drummer region, bring it down to the quiet part. Pick your groove. Again, we can, it doesn't have to be a bass. We can pick a different instrument. We can come over here and we can grab um, something else. Um, we want, uh, I don't know, I don't know why, but we'll do harpsichord. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more rock and roll than, <laughs> than a harpsichord, right? use a function I use all the time. Uh, it's called capture last performance as recording. So I'm going to hit my key command and uh, I should have my MIDI region here. I've got my harpsichord and in the harpsichord what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantiate a MIDI effect, some kind of arpeggiator, so I get something a little crazier. point is, is you can get it to follow any of the MIDI data, whether you trigger it, whether you uh, sample in audio, it'll follow audio regions, it'll follow the MIDI data, and it'll do follow the arpeggiation. So basically it looks for the rhythms and it accomplishes it. So take these ideas, run with them, try to create some new beats, and I'll be back with you with more fun tips. Peace out.